Uh, hi, my name is Ava Tarantino. I am a Sicilian Italian American um, born into the Tarantino Bartoloni family. I work for Capri Communities. Um, here we are at St. Rita Square. Uh, right next door to us is St. Rita Church, and that is my parish and um, my connection to Blessed Virgin of Pompeii as well. Perfect. Is that good? <laughs> yeah, that's really good. Yeah. Cool. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so whatever, whatever you would like to start with, um, the floor is yours basically, yeah. Okay. Uh, so now I look at you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So my fascination with uh, Blessed Virgin of Pompeii comes from my family, just kind of being interested in where my family came from. So my family came from Santalia and Bugadilla in Sicily. And then my great grandparents immigrated here to Milwaukee and they kind of took home in the third ward. When did they immigrate? Sorry. Huh? Immigrate. What, when did they immigrate? Oh, uh, they immigrated here in the 1900s. Mm -hmm. Like early 1900s. My grandpa was born in 1929. So he was born here. Mm -hmm. But then they went back and forth mm -hmm. a few times between Milwaukee and Sic back to Sicily. Mostly because of the like mafia in both areas, but that just speaks on how violent it was at the time. Mm -hmm. But when they settled back here for good, they settled in the third ward, and then both um, my grandpa's side of the family and my nana's side of the family, they both went to Our Lady of Pompeii, um, Blessed Virgin of Pompeii, and they loved it. Like it was a beautiful church. I look back and I look at the pictures and I'm like, this is just like such a staple. Mm -hmm. I can't believe they tore it down. The interior is fascinating. It's just so like, it looks so much bigger on the inside than the outside from the pictures I've seen at least. Yeah, I, uh, pictures, I, I personally feel like pictures don't even do it justice because mm -hmm. I never got to see it with my own eyes, but I just know that it was beautiful because all the Sicilians gathered there. So it has to be beautiful. Uh, do your grandparents have any stories or, or your parents, do they tell them any stories about that? Or? My, going to the church, not so much because by the time they settled, it was around the time they tore it down in like 1967. So by the time they tore it down. My dad, so my grandparents died when I was really like younger, so I didn't have the time to sit at the table with them, but my dad, he was about like 10 when it was torn down. But he has seen it with his own eyes, and he, um, that's kind of why he built St. Rita to replicate uh, Blessed Virgin of Pompeii, is because how beautiful it was and it's like that pink hue is so subtle but everybody knows like where it is what you're talking about and us Sicilians kind of deserve that um so when they tore down 794 or tore down uh the church to build 794 all the Italians moved uh to the east side and that's kind of where like my knowledge of our family history start. I really remember it being played. So we would come. My grandparents would come here for church on occasion, but it was the gathering place for all the Sicilians. So then, when in twenty, if we fast forward to twenty eighteen, my dad struck a deal with uh, Father Tim and three holy women to buy the church for a dollar and rebuild it and put like our building that we're in today on the campus as well huh. but in return the church would get the parish would get the church back for a dollar 
and they get a brand new church accessible for all ages and uh, probably like the best nod to the Sicilians that came before us mm -hmm. um, in replicating the beautiful church that they all gathered in. Mm -hmm. So so the community kind of like keeps, keeps through. It'll keep on going, persevering through all these kind of like, they tore down the original church, they moved to a new location, now we have this new kind of building, this new generation yep. kind of coming up. Yep, and um, yeah, exactly. It's kind of beautiful. You know, uh, I think like now they try to strip people from their like ethnicities and take away that sense of pride that people have. Heritage. Um, the heritage, yeah. Heritage is a better word. Uh, yeah, they really try to strip you of your heritage and being prideful in it. But if you have a place to gather with like-minded people that are all um, that are all we're all prideful of being Sicilian. Like I go to church on Sunday and I see all the Sicilians um, of the East Side, and they may not live in the East Side anymore. Like. I live in Pewaukee, a few of them live out there. We all live kind of ventured out, but we all come on Sunday to gather. And everybody has that tradition of going to church and then going to Gloriosos and Shortinos, getting bread, fresh bread, and then eating at Gloriosos, so. It's interesting kind of how like, you said that the original church was more of like a, a community center of, of like social aid initially. And now this new church is kind of um, a spiritual communal aid. Uh, there's still that sense of like, well, we're all just together. We kind of like have to, um, is that something you, yeah. Yeah, you with so, yeah. So I would drive through, uh, me and my dad would drive down the streets of Milwaukee and he would kind of give me like, a, oh, this is where we did this. This is where we did this. And questions would spark. And so like I would ask about the church and when Sicilians came to Milwaukee, um, they all landed in the same spot in the third ward and um, the church was that center point that everybody could gather. You would hear people that speak the same language as you, that cook similar to you. It was all familiar to them, so um, you can have a stepping stone at that church and they provided um, a sense of community and support. Um, and then when they tore it down, that became St. Rita. So it while the church and is four walls, that's it a church is just four walls. And it's what's inside, from the statues to the altar to the people that gather there, that's what makes the church. So the beautiful part about um, Blessed of Pompeii is that it's not there anymore, but the feel is still at St. Rita. It's still here at mm -hmm. Sarita, so. Is there like, um, how would you, like, how would you picture, I guess, the, the future of the, of the Italian community here in Milwaukee? Is it, is it a positive, like, is it a bright one, do you think, or is it going to be, is it like? There's a lot, I think there's a lot of potential, um, but, like, I am very, I am getting more involved in the ICC, and I think that's kind of where it all starts. It all starts at church and at the ICC. And there are more young people coming to church but and to the ICC, but I think it really starts with us young people and just kind of uh, going back to our roots. Like my grandparents passed away a long time ago now and I would do anything to sit at the table with them and ask them stories about like, oh, what were you doing when you were my age? Like, how was life when you were my age? And I get that through our church, like the people I go to church with. Um, but yeah, I think younger people, like our age, our generation just need to um, just kind of sit down at the table with their grandparents and have those conversations and start to like get an interest in it. Cause we're, great people, um, and there's a lot of prominent people in Milwaukee that are Italian, so the future is bright. It is bright, um, but it can always be brighter with more people involved. Hmm. 
This, this is a weird question, but uh, how do you think the community would, would react if the city were to like, oh, we're going to turn down this church now, kind of deal? And I know it's just like it's a weird hypothetical, but no, yeah. Would there be like a rallying behind a bit big movement or? Um, I would hope so. I would hope so um, because it offers like resources, so many resources uh, for people. Like my, me personally, I've had uh, like a really tragic death recently and they've provided so many resources for me and my family to get, uh, to feel like we're helped and we can get through it. So it would be really sad. I would hope for it because it, um, but I don't know because I don't know how much uh, people really that like. I know my the people that go to the church value it. So yes, there would be an uproar in that sense. But for the greater community, I don't really know if people see like the value of having churches because it's not just a cath like it's not just the Catholic churches that provide value. It's like all religions, but. I don't know if we as a whole see uh, religion as as what it should be mm -hmm. held as. So, good question. Sorry for that. It was just weird. It just popped in my head. No, yeah. So I was thinking, I was like, I saw those pictures, like those giant protests when they're trying to, and there was like a big movement uh, to try to prevent, um, was it Virgin Pompeii from being torn down? And I'm just like, I, yeah, like personally, for, like, yeah, I'm not sure if like people could actually like really like I don't think people yeah. would rally around a yeah. not even like I don't even think people would rally around rally around a church not even this one specifically yeah. but a church like that anymore yeah. um, that kind of speaks to yeah and also know, just Milwaukee's kind of like weird tearing down everything kind of yeah you know, attitude <laughs> yeah but the one thing about Milwaukee is no matter what you can go to the top of this building to the top of any building um, where you can get like some sort of view and you'll see how many church steeples are prominent in the skylines and it's like how many of them do we not see so yeah. milwaukee's filled with churches yeah. um, one of my favorite views is like over the bridge and you can see all, like the outline of the city it's just uh, yeah absolutely beautiful it is yeah. What's left of it? <laughs> What's left of it? It's so beautiful. What's left of it? I mean, like the skyscrapers that are coming in are nice, but um, yeah, it's just so nice to like look. Like you can just look and see like some history mm -hmm. of what, how beautiful Milwaukee was. Yeah. I'm mean, not too far away from here, I believe. Uh, two blocks uh, from here, you can, you can see it probably from another window. Um, it's the UPS store now, it's kind of a retirement home with a big parking lot that used to be one of the largest convents in North America. And it was a big, beautiful Gothic building that they tore down in the 50s, 60s, right around the same time. Uh, and it's just like, oh, just... Imagine if they didn't tear it down what they could have, like, how they could have worked to renovate it and what they could have done with it. Mm -hmm. It could have been something, like, so beautiful, but while also keeping, like, the history and the skeleton of Milwaukee. Yeah, I um, I like how like the Saint Rita's is kind of like uh, it's a return to to Pompeii because like um, with the loss of Pompeii, it was a loss for the future generations as well. Like some uh, something that was yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because no, yeah, because like yesterday I was at the ICC um, playing bocce and I walked down the hall and there's a picture of um, the church and. The pictures don't do it justice, but when you look at the picture and then you like see St. Rita, you're like, oh my gosh, that connection. So you kind of make that connection and then you start, eventually questions start to arise like, why did this church, why was this church built to signify um, Blessed Virgin of Pompeii? So you can ask those questions and I hope that uh, people ask, keep asking those questions so it piques their curiosity and they look into it because when you like look into the question that you have you kind of form a knowledge about it and then you start it really just piques your interest and you dive down this rabbit hole and it kind of forms your identity helps form your identity at least it did for me mm -hmm. but 
And then just one last question. This is kind of like the, a rehash of the, the tearing down one. If you were, if you were alive back then, how would, how would it have made you feel to have like this loss? How do you think, how do you th yeah, think? Um, if I probably, it depends. At my age right now, if it had been like right now, I probably would have been so heartbroken because I do, I love going to church and gathering and seeing all the people there. Um, and so I would be like, I would. Really mad. I would probably be the one at the front picketing. Like, you're, there's no way you're tearing down my church. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. I don't necessarily think when they were tearing it down, they like, saw how big of a loss it would have been. It was to the community, because it just totally tore that whole, the whole Italian community apart. They separated, because I said back earlier that People came to the east side. People also, some people went to the south side too. But it kind of tore everybody up, blew up a, like a whole community of people. Um, and that's really sad. So I would have been front row picketing, mm -hmm. yelling at people, just trying everything that you can to not have that happen. And I'd probably speak up on any church that is being torn down, especially if it's very historical, because you can't, you shouldn't tear down churches. Yeah. Thank you. Well, that's all the questions I have. Is there anything else that you'd like to add or, or say or anything? Um, I guess like if you want to uh, experience what the Blessed Virgin of Pompeii was like, come to St. Rita on Sundays at 10.30 because that's like the closest you'll you'll get to it, um, but it's a magical it's a magical experience because you don't walk in and you're and you're like oh, Saint Rita. You walk in and you're like oh like the Sicilians. We're Sicilian. My family's here. It's all good. It's fun. So thank you for doing this. Thank you very much. Thank okay. you for taking this time and answering all these questions. I hope it was okay. No, it was perfect. It I was mean, good. Yeah. yeah. I have a question actually. Yeah. Well, um, I don't know if you already asked this because I was kind of distracted, but like, do you have any stories of like growing up kind of in this kind of community and like just because you said you started working here at the age of 10. Yeah, so I, uh, it's really funny. Everybody thinks that I live down here and I don't. I live in Pilaki, but I'm here all the time because you just have like, I'm you just feel this connection because like my family like this is where I feel closest to my grandparents and my dad because my dad recently passed away and so now I'm here even more but um, yeah stories my stories are very very similar to like everybody's because a lot of people, when they had families, they moved out into the suburbs, and so they would come in on come to the city on Sundays, and you would go to church, and then you go to Gloriosos, and you go to Shortinos, uh, but the big focal point is always the church. Uh, just going to church, and after you go to church, you walk over to Gloriosos, and you see everybody again. You're like, ah, oh, I haven't seen you in so long, but. Are there actually, well, I guess one more question. Are there still any connections to Sicily itself? Um, are there like visits back or are there like exchanges between like really distant, I guess, family members? Um, yeah, so the last time I was back was in 2015 and it was amazing because we have, you walk down the streets and um, you see like all the, you can like picture the stories and all of that, but there is um, Scardinas on Locust. Uh, they go, it's like a deli, Sicilian deli. So you walk in there, it's very much like you're in Sicily. Uh, Damien Scardina is the owner and his two parents help out. And they go back to Italy uh, for the summer months usually. Um, but 
that's like the biggest connection. And then there's the Carinis. They still go to Sicily. So people still go to Sicily and have family there. My family's all here though. Mm -hmm. So. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. No problem. It's okay. Yeah. Cool. Oh, really? oh, it was off the whole time. <laughs> yeah. And that is um, Joe Denti's house. He lives at the Catholic home. But he owned that house, and it's like the landmark in Santalia. Mm -hmm. But uh, like my great grandfather, Damien's grandfather, were like octopus, like fishermen. Oh. So like you see pictures of Santalia, and there's little like cove bay type things, mm -hmm. um, and you just hear. I would hear stories about them being on the boat, getting the octopus, and then they like whack them like so many so many times to try to like stun them mm -hmm. and like, kill them mm -hmm. um and those were always my favorite stories because <laughs> uh as a sicilian octopus is like my favorite food mm -hmm. but it's also my favorite animal <laughs> so it's oh, kind of weird in that sense yeah. <laughs> but like yeah so food is also another thing that brings us closer to mm -hmm. our heritage um so it's yeah I can't believe I didn't talk about food. That also brings us closer together. But yeah, uh, St. Rita, like, uh, I don't know if they had this at, if they did this at Blessed Pompeii, mm. or if this is just like the three holy women thing, but they have spaghetti dinners, and all the uh, Italian ladies, like, help uh, make the meatballs. Uh, Shortinos donates cannolis, but we have a spaghetti dinner mm. this Sunday mm. at uh, 11.30. 8 a.m. 11.30 to 5.30. Okay. Yes. So if you stop on by, you'll see a lot of Sicilians and you get a lot of great information <laughs> <laughs> there. Try to this Sunday. I work, but yeah. Yes. If it happens on a regular basis, I might stop by one of these times. <laughs> I wish it happens more on a regular basis because the food is so good, mm -hmm. but uh, it happens like a few times a year. Mm -hmm. I can keep you updated on it. Sure, that'd be great. Thank Don't you. Don't worry. <laughs> I love food, so I mean, I mean, Italian food specifically, but yeah. Yeah, but like doing things like the spaghetti dinner, um, that kind of keeps everybody connected and mm -hmm. keeps that like Sicilian feel, mm -hmm. uh, Sicilian way of life mm -hmm. going. That they instilled when they came here. So are the different societies that St. Rita's has the, the statues of, are they still active or most of them or no? Not really. Not really. Um not really. And I feel like it's that is because not to put blame on that generation, but um the generation what is it, the baby boomers? Mm -hmm. The baby boomers, they were the ones that kinda like their families may have moved out of the city and then they moved, kept in the suburbs mm -hmm. and kind of just like didn't, I feel like didn't really like instill the importance of being like Sicilian mm -hmm. and your heritage mm -hmm. and where you came from matters and your ancestors. They didn't really instill that upon like our generation as much as like their parents mm -hmm. did because they so I think that's why mm -hmm. there's not that many young people that are like interested in joining it, like the societies. Oh, that was unless they're forced by their parents, but that was my next question. Do you see a revival coming up anytime soon, or not really? Uh, not really for the uh, societies. Mm -hmm. I, although, if there's a revival in Festa, mm -hmm. if Festa can get back to what it was. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling that that would boost the societies to kind of. Right. I think the Garibaldi Society is the only like heart society that's like really maintains mm -hmm. um, active mm -hmm. activation. So. Yeah, Tracy was telling me that they stopped uh, moving the statues out of Saint Rita's for for a fiesta, so it's just mostly just march at this point, kind of without really like. That procession kind of behind it. Yeah, and it's like, well, where's the. People often think that, okay, like numbers are depleting, like there's only, there's only five people that. So those five people. It's important to them. So it's important to them. And eventually people will like come back and catch on. Mm -hmm. You just need. The worst thing you could do is just 
get it out completely and let it like completely die. Mm -hmm. You just gotta keep some little flame going, you know? Mm -hmm. so hopefully, with the revival of Festa, the societies can come back. Cause I'm now at the age where like I see an importance of joining a society, but then I go to like look at what society to join in my society that like Santalia where they don't do anything. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a joke. Mm -hmm. So That's yeah. True. Maybe one day. Look for it. You can always I could always be the change I wish to see. There Maybe. <laughs> We're trying, <laughs> but hopefully, because I mean that's what made like Italian, like Sicilians and Italians great. Mm. So we would love to see them great again. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. yeah. Well, thank you very much again. No problem. <laughs>